Hey guys, welcome back. So, as you might be able to see behind me here, this is one of my old shooting areas. Uh, this is my old backstop. And originally it was a really big log. It was a couple feet in diameter and it did a really good job of stopping all the rounds. But now, over the years, it's rotted away and it's nothing but rotten punk wood. So, I'm going to have to stack something else up here. But before I do that, all that lead that went down range, it's all mixed in with all that rotten wood now. So, times are getting rough. Some people say we're not in a recession. Some people say we are. Either way, we got some heavy inflation. And being able to find some range lead like this and even some brass. I found some brass out here, too, that's good for reloading. Uh, that's something that's going to keep you going when times get tough. So, let's dig in here and see what all we can find. This is actually the third time I've looked through all this stuff. I've come out here in the daytime, I've come out here at night with a headlamp, sometimes that helps, you know, it focuses the light and you can see uh, bullet jackets and things shine a little bit better in there. As you see, I've got my uh, professional lead scrap bullet container here so that I can carry all my findings back with me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll probably still find something, so let's dig in. See a little something down in there. That's it. That's a little flake. Yeah, it looks like lead. Throw that in there. There's something else. Yeah, oh, that's a big chunk. That might have been a big round ball there. Another jacketed round. That looks like it was maybe a 30 30. Here's some more. Doing pretty good. Alright guys, so I am out here at a private range, this is actually a law enforcement range, and we're going to look for some brass and some lead. See they don't have very many targets out, but you can see where they normally shoot at. If you see these steel targets here, a lot of times that's an easy spot to find some. Let's see what we got here. They, they leave these little discs. See this? Boom. That's lead right there. There you go. It's like picking up coins almost. That stuff melts down really easily. So we got a ton of this sitting here. And if you look around in the grass, it's like an Easter egg hunt. Plenty of brass around here. Let's see if I can find one. Usually if the sun's out, it's a little bit easier to see because you can see it shining in the grass and they just mowed yesterday I think so it may be easier to find some here we go all right nine millimeter perfect uh, sheriff's department here recently made the move to nine millimeter Before that, for about a decade, they've been shooting 45 ACP. Before that, it was 40 Smith & Wesson. No big surprise there. It's probably the most common law enforcement round that you'll find. But right here in this berm, you can see how the grass is gone here. So this is mainly where they're shooting, and you don't have to look hard before you start to find plenty of lead. There's also a lot of rocks in here too, and this, this dirt's kind of like clay. Uh, but yeah, plenty of these laying around, and since they were shooting that the big honking 45 bullets for so long, there's a 
a lot of big chunks of lead. So I'm going to gather up what I can here and then show you what we came up with. Alright, so we've been out here a total of maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Got a, got a good little bit here. Not a lot of brass on this trip, but a good bit of lead. Alright, so we're out at the family farm looking for brass. And as you can see, the grass is pretty tall here, so I brought the metal detector to help us out. And this, was, this has been working great. I mean, look, it hasn't taken any time at all to get a big bag full. And there's still plenty to be had. This is one spot where we normally shoot at, and then there's another spot where I've shot at for years down here. There's no telling what we're going to find down there. Up here, it's mostly 9mm, uh, 223 and 450 Bushmaster. So. You don't have to look around too long before you find what you're after. finding a lot all right so kind of separating out my brass here I got a pretty good deal of nine millimeter uh, but all I've done with all this is just wash it in soap and water I throw it in a container like this that I can shake it around in there and uh, get most of that dirt off now you have to take a toothpick or something and pick some of the dirt out of it uh, but once you run it through like that, it'll be clean enough to run through the dyes. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is get the primers out, and then they're going to go on my tumbler. I like to get the the, uh, the primer out first, that way the media and the tumbler can clean out that primer pocket. Now I don't have like a really good reloading uh, vibration tumbler. What I have is a rock tumbler but it works really well for wet tumbling uh, so the media that we use with that is stainless steel pens that cost just a little bit of nothing and they're reusable uh, we'll throw it in there with some soap and water and maybe a little bit of lemmy shine so hopefully we can get some of this rougher brass to look you know like brass again i don't care if it's shiny uh, just so long as it's uh shining up enough that it's not going to mess up my dyes. So, there you go. So let's get all this deprimed, and we'll throw it all in the tumbler. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how I clean this brass. This is just some extra stuff we had. Some of this, this is a, you know, 30 out 6. This is really, really bad as is this uh, 300 wind mag that's it yeah that's another 30 out six there um, some of this uh, 450 Bushmaster does not look bad at all see it looks all dark like that but that's fine that's gonna polish up really good but I'm gonna throw this in here is a 45 Colt throw all these in here here's a 7.62 by 54. Toss all these in. You see, I don't have a fancy vibration tumbler. All I have is this, uh, like, rock tumbler. But it's going to work really well for wet tumbling. All right, so the next thing we put in, these are stainless steel pens. I got them here in this. Uh, sifter that I use whenever I get done I just dump them out here and shake them up then I can get all my my casings out now we're gonna put in a little bit of blue dawn dish soap it don't take much that's a real small container and then we've got this uh, lemmy shine here which is a detergent booster and all this is is citric acid it's in powder form we'll give it a little but, oh, that's, that's, that's probably too much, but it's okay. Uh, 
when you're running dirty brass like this, you're just going to run it for about an hour, an hour and a half, and then you'll want to empty all this out and uh, change the water in it. So that's fine. All right, now we've got some water to put in here. Just like that. You don't want to fill it up beyond this line right there. Now we're going to put our lid on if I can do this one handed. I may lack the dexterity to do this. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Okay. Now we put this piece on like that. Lock that dude down on there. Alright. Until it stops. There we go. Perfect. Alright. Now we stick that on there. Turn it on. Like I said, we're going to let this run for about an hour. And that's going to knock off a lot of that nasty corrosion. And I'm going to change the water. That water is going to look like swamp water. And then after we change that out, throw it all back in here, do the same thing all over again, and then let it run for two or three hours. Check on it, see what we got there. Alright, so we've got five of our reloads here. Nine millimeter. So let's load them up and see how well we did. Now this is 4.5 grains of ramshot zip on top of a 115 grain full metal jacket bullet. And our target, which is a little bit shaded right there, uh, we've got an orange steel 8-inch uh, target. It's at 15 yards. All right. Let's see. I'd say that worked pretty good. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah, you can see where all of our impacts are. It ain't bad at all. 15 yards and, yeah, well, it's probably about a three, three and a half inch group. I'll take it. All right, so I'm gonna try to melt down some of our range lead. I'm doing this out on the front porch, so. We're gonna have a lot of road noise, unfortunately, but this is the driest and flattest area that we can do this. So, we're gonna start with this old US military M1950 stove. And uh, you're about to see why they call these barn burners. <laughs> There's no real burner control on here. They burn really hot and really fast. So, get that. We're letting it preheat right now. Once it gets good and warm, then we'll turn the fuel up and it's going to shoot a fireball probably three or four feet high. We get ready to back up. That seems 
everything's safe, right? It's got to heat up. Once it heats up, we're good to go. Add in some more pressure. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on. It's got to get the generator hot enough that it vaporizes the fuel. And it shouldn't take very long at all, and all this is going to start melting down. Now this whole process has only taken about 15 minutes so far. There we go. These are just empty bullet cases, dirt, pieces of wood. this kind of silvery skin on top. A lot of people think that that's uh, some type of contamination, but a lot of what that is is just oxidation. You do want to make sure you get all the dirt out that you can. And that's looking pretty good. I and mean, we're going to clean it up a little bit more whenever we go to use our ingots. this over here if so you can see it. Alright. This junk is really hot. Really, really hot. So, even with these welding gloves, I can't just grab that. I'm going to have to wrap this glove around it. Like so. 
and grab this carefully. And then we'll pour this in here. take long for this to cool. Looks like we got about two pounds. Each one of these uh, center pieces here are half pound. And the larger sections on the side are a pound. So Should have a pound here, half pound there, half pound there. even marked Lee and then half half all right so we've talked a lot about using range lead and we don't know the actual composition of that lead so it could be uh, that you end up having some lead deposits in your barrel whenever you start shooting cast bullets that you made with this range lead because we don't know what it's actually made out of right so if that does happen and you have a problem with lead fouling in your barrel, you can make this stuff right here. This will help you out with it. All right, this is a home brew. This is called Ed's Red Bore Solvent. It's been around for a long time. I first heard about this from one of my best friends and mentors who was a gunsmith, and he made up some of this stuff and used it a lot. And this is based on some older things, like I think a Frankfurt Arsenal number 18 bore solvent or something like that and use some slightly different ingredients that you can't get nowadays like sperm oil and uh, yeah your whale oil industry is pretty much done with these days but uh yeah and some other things like turpentine that was kind of flammable and so we substitute some more modern ingredients to make this and it's just really about four ingredients that you mix in equal parts uh, you've got kerosene acetone mineral spirits and what gives it that red color there it's probably the most important ingredient that's a uh, automatic transmission fluid dexron number three i got the cheapest stuff they had at o'reilly's it, it was about nine dollars a quart something like that so you mix it all together and you get this now there's some variations of this all right, the acetone in there can be harmful to some of your gun stocks, so you want to wipe it off if you get it on there, but you can actually leave it out. The acetone helps if you're cleaning shotguns that have been shooting plastic shotgun wads, that acetone really helps get that plastic out. But if you don't have a problem with that, you can leave it out. You can also add in some lanolin, lanolin oil, if you can find it, that'll help as a preservative too. But anyways, there's a lot written about it, there's a lot to be said about it, there's a lot of videos about it, but it's pretty cheap to make. You can make this stuff for about 20 bucks a gallon, <laughs> you know, and it works really well. So, there you go, Ed's Red Bore Solvent. So, we get our Lee lead pot here. We're going to try to cast up some bullets. Now this die that we're using is for a 0.452 diameter bullet which will be for a 45 Colt and it should turn out 255 grains now there's a whole lot that goes into this and there's better videos than what I can make about it so I'm just gonna quickly go through this just so you can kinda see the process here now chances are once I pour this, uh, the first couple batches of bullets that drop out of this, as you see, this is a double cavity mold. Uh, the first few probably won't be all that great. Uh, we'll just drop the bullets back in there, remelt them through. Once our uh, mold gets good and hot, 
then it should start casting some good looking bullets. So, and we'll go from there. So, here's our bullets. We didn't make very many of them, and uh, they didn't pour real great, but yeah, that's okay. We're not going for super long range accuracy here. And actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but uh, These are coming out to 0 .450, which is right at 45 caliber. They're supposed to be 0 .452, so they're a little bit undersized. Um, so we may not get great accuracy with these. We'll just have to see. We've got five of our cast lead bullets loaded up here. Let's see if I can show you. There you go. It is a 255 grain cast lead bullet. And these are black powder loads. All right, we got 40 grains of 3F black powder. All right, so we've got our target set up there at 15 yards. I've never shot black powder out of this revolver before, so I may miss the whole dang target. But we'll see. Woo! That has some oomph. Wow! Holy smokes. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. Yeah, cylinder is getting a little sticky here. That's some hot loads. There you go. That's all we got left. Ready to reload again. Uh, a little bit dirty, a little bit, but hey, we'll work something out, huh? If you're wondering, we're all over the plate. It was not great accuracy, but <laughs> it's something. It'll keep you shooting, right? Look at that. That's what's left of one of the bullets. Huh. 
Eh. Yeah. I hope, I hope that giant fireball coming out of the end of the muzzle shows up on camera like it did for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. Uh, we've shown collecting brass, collecting range lead, uh, shooting some reloads. Now Glock will tell you not to shoot reloads or remanufactured ammo in their guns. It will void their warranty. Uh, but as long as you stick to the books and all the published data and everything, it should be fine. However, uh, you really should not shoot cast lead bullets in a Glock because of the type of the rifling that it has in the barrel. Now you can get an aftermarket barrel and it would be just fine. But uh, yeah, there you go. So we shot some reloaded 9mm and got some really awesome accuracy. Uh, and then we cast up some bullets with our range lead and got some pretty powerful loads although they were not the most accurate loads uh, with our 45 colt here this thing is pretty awesome and throughout this whole process i'm sure a lot of people are watching this and thinking you know i, I know a lot better way to collect range brass or i know a better way to collect range lead or to reload ammo and that's great, there's a lot of different ways to do everything, but the, the point of this video is just to show that with minimal effort, you can still have results. You know, just coming out to the range a few times, we picked up a little bit over 200 9 millimeter casings. We got probably over 100 223. We've got a bunch of assorted 38 Special, 45 Colt, 450 Bushmaster, 30 out 6, you know, whatever. We got a bunch of it, and we've gotten about seven pounds of range lead in all now are cast up in nice little ingots ready to use so and i even touched base on some ed's red bore solvent which unfortunately doesn't work very good for black powder which i'm gonna have to clean up here and it also doesn't work real great for copper fouling but it does do really good for carbon fouling and lead fouling so there you go anyways the point of the video is you don't have to put forth much effort to get Oh, well, you know, pretty good result. Uh, you just do what you can, when you can. That's the point, right? So, if you can spend 15 minutes picking up brass, spend 15 minutes doing it. Uh, nothing here took exceptionally long. It really was the minimal effort. So, you know, spending minutes doing something, that hey, that adds up to hours. Hours adds up to days. And that gives you a whole lot of results. So, anyways, there you go. And when times are tough, you know, you got to play smart and you know, do what you can do when you can do it. So, anyways, I hope this has inspired you. That was the whole point of this, not really to show any one particular skill or how good I am or bad I am at any one thing or another. Uh, just mainly to inspire you to get out there and, and do stuff. So, you know, don't be intimidated by not having a whole lot of time to do it. Anyways, guys, that is all the time that I have for today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, thumbs up. It is just miserably hot out here. You notice I waited until pretty much last light, and I've still got, like, some condensation on my lens. I know it's not as hot here as it is in... Texas and you know some of the four corner states it's really bad out there now we've been under a heat advisory pretty much every day for the last two or three weeks but golly this humidity is just killing us uh, luckily it is just humidity and not the actual temperature <laughs> like out west they're dealing with what like 114 degrees or something in Texas today it's insane Y'all keep that stuff out west. <laughs>